Okay, is everyone logged in? Sometimes it's the projects they remember the most are the ones that they kind of put uh, as much of their own uh, personal influence into it as they can. You always got to kind of keep your ear to that, that that student voice of what's cool and what's interesting and what's kind of you know just so-so and and I know we know I know we always need to do more. I always tell the students this is like one of the best rooms in all the all the school. It was a part of the remodel a couple years ago and big room and got a great little cubicle spaces to, to work from and the students kind of take some ownership in that and it really is a great space to work with them. Any good design process starts with these answering these questions. The who, the what, the where, and the why. Those four you walk through the cafeteria, you walk past the commons, you walk down the corridor, then you turn and you walk into the main entrance of the, of the Media Center slash library, which is labeled 120. Students redesigned the school library. Last year we did it as an individual project throughout the CAD architecture classes. I think when I, when I first started 20 years ago, I didn't really realize that, um, that it, the challenge that would come with teaching an elective in terms of, you know, you're, you're constantly having to kind of you know, market what you're doing and kind of sell the idea to students and hey, this is a viable option for you. And, you know, initially I didn't really recognize that, but then I, you kind of buy into that and recognize that you, you got to, you got to kind of seek out the students and, and hope they can find some, some interest there to keep them coming back. This is one you're going to want to probably fold up and put in the drawer when you're done here in about 12, 15 minutes or so. This one might tend to walk away if you leave it out. And so teaching elective is, is a challenge in terms of, you know, there's always going to be more requirements that students are asked to take in terms of graduation requirements, which might, you know, take them away from some elective type areas. So it's, it's constantly been a challenge in that regard to, to keep trying to keep your classes current and up to date and progressive and, and exciting to them. And, and, and so it looks like some, like, like a, a viable option that's going to be meaningful for them and also, uh, you know, kind of a fun option to take as well because of their interest level. So it, it's made it challenging, and, and I think after you know, going in now, it's like I say, 20 years later, you realize that uh, it's, it's, it's possible, it's doable. You just, you just gotta kinda stay, stay ahead of the game in terms of uh, making it uh, appealing and, and marketable to the, to the student body. Why is a cardboard a good alternative? Lightweight? Oh. It is, it is warm. That's one thing. If you sit in this chair for about five minutes, the heat of your body is absorbing that cardboard. When we first started this project, we said, it's got to be a chair you can disassemble, toss in the trunk, take it to college. Cardboard chair thing we've done in the IED2 class for a long time. And just an idea to say, okay, we've got a, we got a material that's not really that viable or strong as it is just by itself as a flat sheet, but what can we do to bend it, fold it, cut it, shape it? And each one of these is like a separate panel. It's like C-shaped like this. And design it into something that's, that's tangible. And oftentimes those become just like mock-ups or prototypes that maybe they work, but maybe not so much in cardboard, but might work in another material much better. But just once in a while you get one that it works great as it is. I mean, it works great as, a, as an $8 item, you know, <laughs> about $8 worth of cardboard there. A plain old flat piece of cardboard, but with enough ingenuity and enough reshaping. So in this example to that one, you can make some really solid quality product. You always got to kind of keep your ear to that, that that student voice of what's cool and what's interesting and what's kind of you know just so so and and I know we know I know we always need to do more of uh, something that's just going to kind of draw them in because there's there's other options you know and, and so we just got to we got to keep it so that we get the, the concepts across the information the knowledge the, the skills are there but at the same time you know how can you work that into some some cool type projects. <music> We got a couple ads. It's Jonathan Lee, Mia. What's what's going on? Track track stars, track stars. Speech, speech. I think it, a lot of it, in terms of design or in, in creation, in 
some sort of synthesis of thought. It's, it's a lot of it has to do with you're, you're filtering through yourself. You're, you're going to take all this information and you know compose, and you're going to synthesize. And, and when you're doing that collection of all that information, you're going out and gathering all these bits and pieces. If more of that is is experience based, not just knowledge based, but experience. Anybody based. been to Walt? Deer? Eyes? Think about East Eyes Library slash Media Center. What's wrong with it? I think um, it, it just enhances the overall Anything? product at the end and, and the process throughout. Is if you can only four people can sit at any one table. If you can dial into their experiences as much or more so than, than their knowledge and uh, in their let that experience be a really driving force to, their, to the background and then that becomes a, something they can add to these projects. So a local connection, yeah, you just you, you got to get out there and you got to see it. You got you to see how, how it works and what, what people are doing and, and uh, it really becomes a part of that filter as you work your way from inspiration and ideas down to a final, final design project. On the site plan, I mean just maybe it's an idea of something that goes here to address that. And then other teams, LPS, I think, did a, made a good move uh, five or six years ago, jumped onto the Project Lead the Way curriculum, which is kind of a pre-engineering curriculum, pre-architecture curriculum that started back in the eastern United States, started in New York, and has kind of swept across the country. You got schools in all 50 states using this Project Lead the Way curriculum. And the curriculum is set up, it's written by engineers and architects and teachers for high school students to, here's some exposure, here's what you're going to be getting into if you're thinking about engineering CAD, architectural CAD, and here's some of the some of the things that you're going to be faced with. So I think it was a good move. It's it's uh, it's ramped up the curriculum. It's made it uh, it's made it uh, more challenging, but at the same time, uh, it's it makes a great connection to what they're going to see going beyond high school. It's a great reference, but it's it's made it more challenging. And if you would below each one, just put a quick little text box. Just go insert text box, and just put a little quick text box there that says. That's the name of this library. I've always felt fortunate to be at East High. I mean, it's a, and be a part of Lincoln Public Schools. It's a good school, good district. Um, you know, you get a chance to have your, your freedoms within the classroom. You have your guidelines, you have your curriculum, you have plenty of support. You got great, great uh, resources. You got terrific space, you got good, good tools to work with. Uh, kids come in, of course, this class selective. They want to be part of it. They choose to be here. So yeah, it, I mean, it, a lot of the ingredients for the for the recipe of a good day are there.